Uh, good morning. I don't know why I forget that mute button every single time. But I'm so glad you're partnering with us today. We're going to have an awesome time diving into what the Bible says about our thoughts and how we can help others take care or handle with care their thought life. This is the key. I, I'm sorry. I'm jumping straight in. I, we're just so you, worked wait. up. This could honestly be, we've already been talking about, this is at least a four-hour session, so just get ready. <laughs> not today, and, though. But not today. But no. I'm telling you, we are fired up. I'm going to start with, and I, I had an opportunity to talk with girlfriends of, of the same um, hunger for the things of the Lord over the things of the world yesterday, and so we've been receiving messages, and I'm going to put two messages that we got together without, of course, revealing who sent the messages. So we received one from a Root family who has a church family that their son has decided that they their identity is crisscross. And that they are no longer what God created them to be. And the grandparents are supporting it. And so the, this child has left the home of their neighbor. And this is a Christian family because the parents don't support that. They say it's not real. Right. And this is. And so we'll be going into uh, help counsel how to biblically approach this with her in a little bit. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we receive from uh, who, <laughs> a pastor. Who is getting ready to run our weird series, which is Walking Examples in Righteousness Daily Makes You Weird to the World, meaning you will be set apart, pulling on scriptures like being peculiar, separate yourself from the world, be set apart, right? So oh, I just realized we're totally jamming you out with my music. Are we music. so loud? Oh, can you even hear us? I'm yeah. trying to fade out our music calmly. Okay, Good. so okay. We, we had the family over there just contact us. Then we have this pastor contact us, and the scripture is... Um, the last part of this, well, okay, uh, can you sing the whole song? Um, oh, my song. You've been called out of the world. Uh, you've been set apart. That's you don't why the belong world, to it. That's you don't why belong the world to, hates the, it, hates to it. That's why the world hates you. That's the last line, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, instead of defining hate and world for which appear in the Bible multiple times, the word hate and the word world, instead of wanting to define those words, this pastor has contacted us and said, the word hate is too harsh for our kids. And we don't know. I know. I see your faces. <laughs> we don't know <laughs> if we could play this memory verse. Uh, would it be bad to change the word and I just alter hate? I mean, I know it's the word of God. Oh, I'm like, mm. <laughs> so I was like, help me, Lord, have patience in her because kids need to know here is this family mm -hmm. dealing with. Guess what? The devil is the author of the world. The father of the world is the devil. And if you do not receive salvation, your father is the devil. The devil hates God and anything good and evil. anything good. Evil yes. hates good. Good should hate. The Bible is very clear about our detest. What is and we evil. even hate what is evil. Not who is evil. What is evil. And it's not soft about it. It's it's so clear. And and here we have this family dealing with this because they've gone to a soft peddling church where it's okay. And we want to uh, honor your feelings over the truth of the word and help you understand it so you can clear out the cobwebs and know who you really are because you know who he really is. Instead, they're soft peddling, altering the word so that it's soft to their carnal nature, which offends God, and then come back going, I don't know why my kid is confused. Never hard Harshly saying, take authority over that thought. It comes against Christ. He's our king and it doesn't belong there. Instead going, oh, I'm going to validate your feelings. I don't want you to feel badly. Okay, now, I'm sorry if this offends some people. You need to be offended so that you can get <laughs> over it and realize the word of God. Our king is this good. Our children are this important for us to understand the world hates God. And when we say world, when the Bible says world, it's referring to the way of doing things apart from God. The Bible refers to the world over and over and over again. The world's way of doing things. What is he saying? Doing things outside of salvation. You have not come into salvation and become and begun doing things heaven's way or God's way or by the word. You're still doing it the carnal way, by the flesh, 
out of evil comes death. So the world's way equals death. God's way equals life. God hates sin. The world's way is sin, right? <laughs> so hate is not the bad word, but we have to realize we need to stop long enough and find out what the Bible is saying before we soft pedal it and steal away truth from our kids, from ourselves, from those around us, from those in our church, because we want to be more gentle with it. You can be gentle with the word hate by simply defining it. That's it. You can be gentle with hate. The world hates you. Why does the world hate you? They don't hate you. They hate Christ in you. They hate the, the king of glory because the world's way is rooted in the evil one. The evil one has a demise. He has an end of which he has no power, no freedom, no authority. So he hates those that have authority over him. Oy. There is no soft way to say that hates and we should hate his way of doing things as much as he hates God's way of doing things. So when we come at you today, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Um, we've always looked at th this way. We had this conversation with a group of women the other day. They said, should you, should you edit the word of God when you're reading it to your kids? Cause there's some parts that are <laughs> uh, X rated, you know, R rated, you know, and it's the word of God and you've got to be led by the Holy spirit. But you read through it and you trust the Lord. I always compare it to when I was a kid, I watched movies I had no business watching. But I didn't realize I had no business watching them until I watched them at this age. So even though it went in. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. Pause for a sec. Who's ever pulled up a cute movie they remember from when they were a kid to watch with your family? And all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh my. Oh, I did. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and your kids are like, what? What? And you're like, oh, no, we're, we're shutting this one up. We'll pick something else. Let's pick something that's because like. none of that yeah. went in. Well, the word of God to me is the opposite. You will be, your kids will be protected. You'll be protected. But the seed is still there to, for understanding to come by the Holy Spirit later. So to filter the word of God is what I would say not to do. Trust the Holy Spirit. He will lead them into all truth, just like he does us. And don't filter the word even in hard parts. And sometimes it's okay to say, when they go, why did that happen, mom? Go, I don't know. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. See if he'll bring clarity. And if he doesn't, mm -hmm. let's write it down. He'll bring clarity later. We're not going to understand all things all at once. Or else when we walk into glory and we see things clearly, what would we have to see? We are discovering things now, mysteries he's hidden for us. Uh, otherwise, I'd say if we knew everything really like we should, we we could stop anyone from having battles, you know? Be yes. like Pew, pew, you know, <laughs> like never again. Destroy those thoughts. If you really so, understood the power of God in you. Pause for a second. Welcome to those of you who are joining us. Hi. We have some amazing people have joined us online. And if you want to join and actually participate in the live discussion, doesn't mean we're going to put your video up on the screen or anything like that. It just means that you can ask questions. When she's saying raise your hand, those of you watching on YouTube, Facebook, you can't do that. And so join us. You can simply just go to rootbible.com. And right now we're in the middle of our Handle with Care series. So the, I love this because the things we're talking about today on a kid's level is what we're talking about in the senior high and in the junior high, elementary, preschool, the family class happening tomorrow night. All of them are on taking care or handling with care well, our thoughts yeah. so that the enemy does not run rampant with our thoughts. You've had that. Guess what? Even though our kids may not have opened up and told us, they are experiencing the same things. And they're beginning to be trained that when this happens, these thoughts are mine and these thoughts are normal and these thoughts um, are true. We have to hit it from a young... Oh, I didn't bring your laptop in. Or even Matthew, okay. From a young age. They're not even okay. Mm -hmm. Matthew, I was reading in my Bible this morning, Matthew chapter 9 uh, talks about the transfiguration uh, of Jesus and then they come down and there's the guy standing there. He's like, I have this demon-possessed son that your, your uh, disciples couldn't. Uh, get Cast rid of it. And we always kind of skip through that and we get to the end where it's like, fasting this kind prayer. can only come out by fasting and prayer. 
But I love that Jesus takes the second, and I, I, I don't know, but I swear he did it just so that we could have this recorded in our word as this is the truth. Jesus says, when did this start to happen? And the, the man says, it happened when he was young. And if I think about my life, the things that the enemy has tried to convince me that these are always who I'll be, I can never escape this certain sin or have built those tendencies in my, um, in my life, they started when I was young, really young. I, some of my earliest memories when I'm like four and five are dealing with this same thing. And I began to accept it as real. No one taught me reality. that that wasn't right. And so, and because I didn't open up, because I'd never been trained how to take thoughts captive or even what that meant, I thought, okay, because I'm inclined to think this way, this must be real for me. And even though other people can live the way the Bible says, I just can't because this is who I've always been. This is who God made me to be. I don't know why, but it's just that. It's the exact same thing playing out with lies in kids all over the world right now. As the world pushes the world system, thoughts, Antichrist spirit. Think a certain style of thinking that you have to be open to this. You have to celebrate this. This is what gives you value. That's opposite of what the world, of what God's word says opposite of God's intentions and we don't conquer those thoughts by ignoring them or allowing ourselves to continue meditating on them, our kids to continue meditating on them. We have to train from a very early age. You're going to have thoughts and they're stinky poo poo thoughts. They're not you. They're not true. And so what do you do when you have those? Let's talk about it. And honestly, I would say a lot of adults don't know. Well, they don't recognize even that there's there's thoughts that enter their mind that aren't from them. Right. Because if we don't know that we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body, then immediately any thought that comes in, we identify as oh, either something's wrong with me, or I can't believe I had that thought, or when our kids are dealing with the same thing, if we are. Right. And we need to be able to identify that in them now. We need to be able to identify it in each other. Uh, uh, a mindset that I had all the time. And, and I don't like that people call it generational curses. I, I don't believe that. It's a but trained I, way of thinking. I do believe it's realities created by a trained way of thinking that need to be renewed and you can walk out of in the authority and living out of the word of, of your new identity. So in my in my life, it is has been, uh, you don't have enough. When you get a lot, you do something fun, then you feel guilty you did it, and then you have nothing, and then you get more, and then you go do something fun because you never get to do anything fun because you never have anything, and then you go do something, and then you feel guilty, right? Only in me, it would come out in frustration and inner hatred, and I don't want to go. It's too much. We have too much to do. It's not honoring <laughs> God. It's not like... Uh, such a weird mindset and I thought I was totally free of it and we're just about to take Wyatt on this like mini getaway and it came in like a like like a nasty banshee, banshee. last night like <laughs> I mean I'm like going to bed and he's like he's like you're not good enough how could you do this you have so much to do people are dying going to hell you're not in the place of your ministry to take your kids to the I mean just like bam 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 you think you're ahead you're behind watch all of the things that you have set before you fail I mean if you could have come up with the lie it was coming at me because I thought I was free of it and here I am, like half asleep in bed, and I'm like, no, it's Jesus. No, I am free. No, like I, I probably sound like a, a weeping, like I don't know. And I'm like, because I'm half asleep, right? I'm like, that's not true. That's not true. I'm like combating even in my sleep. And it just, to wake up and have this discussion at the table was so freeing because it's like, no, because none of those things are true. And I will stand the ground for the generations to come that that 
that way of thinking, which was affecting my acting, no longer exists. And it's time that I stand and go against my feelings. And here I am. I'm a, I preach it all the time. And I was getting down on myself. I was getting frustrated. All of the stress of my to-do list was coming back and affecting my attitude. So instead of like, hey, run, we're going to go on, a, you know, I was like, you know, like, <laughs> and because how I was thinking was coming through, not what anybody was doing, but what I was really meditating on, the Lord had to go, woohoo, what are you doing? And, and honestly, Jonathan Shuttlesworth's message from last night, I put it on in the shower and uh, I came out and I apologized that I let wrong thinking control my emotions, control my attitude, and we were going to have a good time. And God doesn't change because of what we see or or you know what we do but we can change what we see and do by what we believe so we're going to imagine all the things that god says is ours and that's how we're moving forward not dwelling on the imagination of what we don't see or what we think or what we have been taught to think and allowing it to change our attitude and i know that sounds like a lot of words but we do that daily with ourselves we do that daily with the kids literally when i see even a spark of bad attitude in the kids i'm like wait what are you thinking on right now Mm-hmm. What are you thinking on right now that's She's... causing you to what? No. Go finish your sentence. Yeah, well, that's causing you to react this way. That's causing you to talk to me this way, or your brother. And and I say that, and my kids don't even like they don't even know what talking back is. But when I just hear a, a hint of, uh, I have one kiddo in particular that was dealing with um, uh, self awareness and being embarrassed easily. So he was more concerned with how he portrayed people portraying him than he was of of acting correctly. It was totally the 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 Israelites going into the enemy area and then coming out and the twelve or the ten spies say we were as grasshoppers in our own eyes. Yep. That's exactly what we're seeing our our one of our kids walk through that he's his perception of himself compared to his perception of everyone else is it's that he's coming than. up lacking yeah. and so he's responding out of those thoughts that he needs to protect or amplify who he is in order to gain more value when it all begins with Begin his thoughts with. now so this is part of the Handle with Care series. We're talking about thoughts this week and next week. So I want to pause for a sec. If your kids need to hear this message, enroll right now. Let me, I don't even know. Can I put it back up again? I think I can. Can you? Maybe. Maybe. No. <laughs> anyway, enroll your kids in Root Bible, win the Handle with Care series because they need to know. And the, the, you can have these tools to reinforce it at home, but something about having someone saying the same thing that you're saying that's not you, the kids are like, oh, you'll never believe what I learned today. And you're like, I've been saying that for five years. <laughs> that's what happens in these Root classes. So enroll today. We the The class that we are... Let me see. How can I do this? That'll work. The big question for this week in all of the classes is, can thoughts create realities in my life? And we all mentally acknowledge, yeah, probably, they probably do. But the truth is, it's all through the word how much our thoughts create. I mean, think about it. Start at the very beginning. Who is God? His first way that he revealed himself to us was as a creator. And he made us in his image. And so out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. And the first assignment he gave Adam was name the animals. No, be fruitful and multiply to create. Well, that was the command, right? And then he gave him an assignment. I'll show you how it works. Name these animals and that's what they'll be named. Right? Like he's showing them right then. He didn't even give them a clue that we can see in the word. (laughs) Just so whatever rolled out of Adam's mouth now was the name. Right? So he was giving that same nature right away Mm -hmm. to Adam that we have. So he had to first think it and then speak it. Yep. And so as creators, we have to take care of this. The guard your thought life is so important. Take every thought captive. The word wouldn't say 
every thought if it wasn't important. Mm -hmm. It would say, you know, those really bad ones, take care of those thoughts. But it's not. Take captive every thought. Last night, we were talking to our preschool coach. And we said, how would you explain this to kids? Because it's the same way you'd explain it to adults. And I said, I said, and he goes, oh, like, just use anything around you, like a pencil. And she's like, a pencil? And I was thinking the same thing, like, a pencil? <laughs> and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's like, yeah, if every thought that came across your head, you had to write on your face, would you want to write it there? So everybody knew that thought. He goes, if not, if it's not a thought that you would write on your face, it's probably one that doesn't align with Christ, and use the eraser to take it captive and remove it. Just like that. So, uh, because mm -hmm. even we had a little kiddo yesterday, he said, well, how do you take your thoughts captive? A pencil could have told them. If you wouldn't take that thought and go, er, 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 I don't want to listen to my mommy because I'd rather do what I want to do. If Jesus wouldn't look at that thought written on your face and say, I gave her that. And then you want to turn it to the other side and erase it. That's how we take it captive and say, no, I, that doesn't line up with Christ Jesus and what he's told me to do. So I erase that thought. Mm -hmm. I will not entertain it any longer, meaning I will not continue to think that thought. I will erase it every time it tries to come because I know it doesn't belong to Christ Jesus. And that means it doesn't belong in me. So my first question then, maybe it's your same question, <clears throat> is I'm not really aware of every thought. I don't think I could focus on every thought. So how would I know what the predominant thoughts are flying through my head. And God has built us to have some fantastic signals mm -hmm. already built in. And that was me this morning. Your ah! thoughts <laughs> equal your attitude. Mm -hmm. We talked about this in all of the classes. Your thoughts equal your attitude. And so when your attitude is getting stinky, guess what? Now we know. It's like a signal. Hello. Attitude's off. That means your thinking is off. What are you meditating on? Red flag. Start to evaluate what stronghold is a being attempted to be built in your life, setting perspectives. That goes for you. That goes for your kids. That goes for uh, the person at the cash register. That goes for everybody we meet. Attitude equals thoughts. And so the kids in your church or the parents you talk to after service, the everything, every time we're together with others, thoughts are the source of every attitude. Mm -hmm. Or the meditations I mean, think about of your heart, if, the word also says. If which... your spouse came home and said, hey, guess what? I was promised at work, I have a $100,000 check coming. I don't even know how that's possible. Instant. You don't see it. It, it hasn't manifested by those words. Now you've accepted them as real. You're thinking about it. What happens? Attitudes, instant change. It could have been the worst day of your life where you were screaming, yelling, chucking mugs at people. I said mug because I saw Jocelyn just drinking. That was a fantastically <laughs> big mug. It was awesome. Anyway, never mind. It, and then you hear that. What happens? Oh my word, I'm so excited. We gotta go celebrate. We gotta go do something awesome. Right? It has a, it's not manifested. It's not in your check or in your hand. It's not in your bank account. It was just words accepted as real, as truths. And you're letting those thoughts go wild. And right now, your attitudes instantly transform to your thoughts. Mm -hmm. What you meditate on creates attitude. Every time. And so that's a fantastic signal for you, for your kids, to when, when attitudes are right, help your kids, help yourself. When you notice that, celebrate it. The meditations hey, you of know your what? heart are right. Yeah. You're the meditations of my things. heart are right. Out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth is going to speak. My attitudes are speaking. My counseling. I, I love that I'm meditating on his word and then, talk, you know, even find a word, a verse that reflects that, what you're meditating on. Get back to the word to just continue that, continue to amplify that. If attitudes are negative, all right, well, I need another, I need to find a verse. What's the verse that is uh, revealing God's truth 
about me, about the situation, about whatever it is, because that is always more true than any thought and any attitude. And as soon as you pull that scripture up, what happens? The thought starts barraging you. That's not true for you right now. You've messed up too many times. You can't receive this. That's for those that have, have walked holier than you or whatever it is. You're right. And you're, you have to take those thoughts captive. What, so what do you do? How do you take a thought captive? You recognize the thought as a lie and begin to speak. Speak the truth. When you speak the truth, it captures that wrong thought, reveals it, and the truth begins to set you free. The, forget, don't forget that the enemy is the deceiver. He's the accuser of the brethren. And so he's going to try to accuse you to keep you from walking out those truths, to believing that they're true for you or for your kids or for the neighbors or for whoever it is. He's going to try to get you to not walk out those truths as real through accusing and through deceiving, trying to twist that and be like, oh yeah, see that verse uh, on healing. It says, if you repent of your sins, he's faithful and just, he'll forgive you of your sins. I, you haven't repented right. And all of a sudden you're like, oh man, you're right. I deserve to be sick because I haven't repented at all. I'm not repenting God's way. Oh, this is horrible. Yeah, I'm just going to be sick the rest of my life. I don't even know how to repent. This is horrible. I'm just, just going to accept it. Now, that's, it may feel silly. may feel real to you, but that's how it works. And the same goes with poverty, right? Mm -hmm. I'd see what's in my bank account this way. It will always be. My parents were that way. My sibling always does good. One sibling in every family down my line has always done well, and the rest just barely make it. That's what it's always going to be. So here's a quick way to identify wrong thinking is thinking carnally alone, so apart from the influence of Christ in our lives. So if it's only what we can have the power to complete do or see happen, then we've eliminated God from the equation. We've eliminated the finished work of Christ from the equation because we're just saying, this is all I can do, so it's all I'll ever get. And we've stopped thinking God's way and provision and more than enough and healing. And we see this all the time, obviously, in healing. I had someone stand in front of me the other day and say, I'm going to the hospital to have such and such removed. This person listens to Andrew Walmax. I've already got it. They've been to a couple of our root courses, classes, not the whole course. And they stood in front of me and I said, well, have you already been healed? Well, yes. Okay. So why are you going? Because they're still there. No, you just said you've already been healed. <laughs> That's true, Kate, but they are there. Well, then you don't believe you've already been healed. That's not true. It is. Which is it? Have you already been healed? Or they're still there. I've already been healed. If you believe Christ Jesus way and not our way, yes, you've already been healed. So I shouldn't go to the doctor. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. Have you already been healed? Yes. So what's the Holy Spirit say? Like When you just bring it to simplicity, what does he say? I will provide all your needs. I don't have enough to pay this bill. It's always been this way. My parents were this way. Where did that money go? I don't know what I'm going to do. This is awful, right? Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> That's taking God out of the equation. What my family did before was without Christ. I will move forward with Christ. I will always have more than enough. Every need will be met. My cup overfloweth. It is not me, but him that provides every single need. I will live my life in obedience knowing heaven pours out just because he's my focus and I refuse to entertain anything else. The same goes for healing, prosperity, deliverance from thinking. Um, I am one thing and not the other. I live one way and not another. All of that resides first in how you'll think. Now, yes, there are de demonic influences. There's a certain person I've been following who does a lot of demonic deliverances. However, the devil is not omnipresent. And though he does have cohorts, there are not as many as there are people in the earth from what we can understand from the way the Bible has broken it down. So even though Jesus would deliver people 
from oppression. He is not even clear in those times what that oppression was, right? Just like a thorn in the flesh. You have to dive into the word to find out the thorn of the flesh was a person who was oppressing or holding Paul back from speaking the truth or coming against him to line people back up with religion instead of the truth in Christ Jesus, right? So don't just take it for what it is. Study it out, because he has given all of his clarity in his word and all truth and freedom for us comes from here first, renewing our mind. After you get saved, you don't see one time that he says it'll probably be because you have to be freed from a demon or you need to be delivered. He says your life will change when you have the meditation of your heart right, when you transform your thinking and when you line up and allow the Holy Spirit to divide soul and spirit. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't spiritual influence. There absolutely is, or else we wouldn't have power over spiritual principalities and powers in high places. But we cannot make that the author so that we don't have to be accountable for our thinking and renewing. Yes, what? Jocelyn. Or were you going to add something first? Nope. Okay. Go for it. Um, at Bible school last night, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, at Bible school last night, we were talking about uh, praying, but... Sometimes as we pray, our mind, we want to go into prayer and our mind's like, oh, I need to do the dishes. Oh, my kids are screaming. Well, <laughs> yeah. she was saying that she has to say my my body and my soul will align with my spirit. Yeah. And so she's commanding that to happen. And yeah. then her mind will wander. And again, she pulls it back in. My body and my soul will align with my spirit. Yep. And she she says that over and over again. And then after a minute or two, then her thoughts stop wandering. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like we have to, that's just like that physical, like, oh, I'm taking captive. Yep. That thought yep. yep. And I'm not going to allow that because right now my focus is on him and his word. And so that, the enemy's mm -hmm. just trying to, oh, no, you don't right. need to focus on that. You know what I mean? Right. So or like just the concerns of the world, the Bible calls it. The concerns right. of the world are trying to steal away. That time that is refreshing, renewing, and needed, right? So it's just oh, those or cares. taking time to those sow good those cares, seeds. right? Exactly. Of the word, yeah. of prayer, of, of who really God good. is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's such a battle with our bodies and you know that carnal nature. So yeah. it's just like no, we can take con c control of that and right. we command it to align with our spirit because yeah. this is what we want to do. Yeah. But and so it just was really good. That that's really good, and that's a good way to explain it to mm -hmm. kids or youth. Like, just because your mind is wandering and you're thinking another thing doesn't mean that's something to entertain or meditate on. Right. And your actions will reflect what you meditate on. We see that all throughout society right now as our youth get bombarded with what they should accept as normal, which is literal insanity. And if we don't do it ourselves, I assure you our children will not. The generations will not. That is... That is a glory to glory promise in the word that we need to pave the way first by doing it right. They'll see us, which will allow us to help them. And then the generations after them going from glory to glory in this manner. Science itself says that like homosexuality, for example, not even out, not even taking the Bible into it. Science itself says anyone who practices that lifestyle shaves at least 20 years off their mm -hmm. life. What in the world? That in itself says, not a great idea. Do you want to live a short time and have extra diseases <laughs> and more struggles in life? Then choose this way. And that's what they're pushing on so many people. That, But those thoughts are not being taken captive in, by so many. And parents aren't being taught to help their kids recognize the attitudes when the meditations of their heart are going wrong. And where it says the meditations of our heart can be evil. Right? And out of our heart, out of the out of the abundance of our heart, then the mouth begins to speak. When the kid starts speaking it, it might be too late. When your friend starts speaking, hey, I'm really struggling with this thing and uh, I really think I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to live this way. I'm going to whatever, make this change. 
It's like emergency level because that's coming from the abundance of in their, their heart. The meditations of their heart. They've already been deceived thinking this is true and inescapable for me. I don't have another option other than whatever it is. To and so this way. that's so why we're talking about. I will justify that the Lord loves me anyway, that the mm -hmm. word isn't quite true, that it's being misinterpreted, right? It's just a slippery slope from there. Once you decide that you're going to believe that it is a way opposite of the word of God, then you will alter the word of God to align with what you believe. And that's where the danger comes in. That's where we see the soft peddling churches coming in. Right. Because they want to change the word of God to be acceptable to human nature or the carnal nature rather than altering the carnal nature to be acceptable to the spirit mm -hmm. of God, which he has so lovingly provided for us to actually dwell with us, to sharpen us, to separate soul and spirit and lead us into all truth. So that is why it's so serious. We met with a couple or a mom and a daughter last night that are going to a soft peddling church and they said it's just getting worse oh my gosh. it's just getting worse <laughs> they decided they stood at the pulpit this last week and said god doesn't always heal but medicine does no it don't <laughs> <laughs> so and they uh, i know and these people know that that this cup they, they, but they didn't know what to do they volunteer at the church i said you leave but the bible says don't forsake you find another and they said there, there is nowhere else God will in, lead you. This is in the state mm -hmm. of Oklahoma. And they've gone like an hour radius. We're actually calling the River Church for them today to see if there's any river-associated churches in the area. But um, that is the desperate measure of which we have reached in today's society, is altering the Word Ooh. of God to be comfortable to our carnality. And if we don't get serious with our kids, mm -hmm. they're in a world that doesn't hide it anymore. Yep. It used to try to sneak in the back door. Now it's just blatant. And, and your thoughts create your realities. And so you have to, from the thought level, take that captive. Be, well, you know, I like quotes. So Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can do it, or whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You're right. And, but you know what? That's just a clever way of retelling the word. The word. Almost 3,500 years earlier, this is what Solomon wrote in Proverbs 23, verse 7. He says, for as he thinks within himself, so he is. That's 2,500 years before Rene Descartes, the, the father of modern philosophy, said, I think, therefore I am. All of these are just clever retellings of biblical truths and but who's applying to them no one unless they're being taught that's why we're doing like handle with care just popped up again that's why we're doing these classes because the body of christ needs to awaken up to the reality that we need to stand up right we need to stand out we need to fight back first within ourselves then within our families, set up that protective hedge where no ungodly thought is allowed to rule and reign or even stay. And we recognize it by watching attitudes. We recognize it by watching someone's availability to God. Because your thoughts equal your availability to God. Right. If your thoughts aren't lined up, with what God says, then you won't hear. You what he will wants to not say. hear what He wants to say, or where He wants to lead you. If your thoughts are just on yourself, or just on your things, or just on your whatever, then you won't be receptive to how He's going to lead you and guide you and say things that may be cross-cultural, maybe things that would push you outside of your comfort zone. If you're taught that your thoughts are always right and if something's uncomfortable, it's not worth it and whatever is the most comfortable, you should just do it because that's true for you. That's what the world's saying. Can I we just, have to say the opposite. Holly, yesterday when we were trying to think of gender dysphoria, was that what we were trying to think of? Is that the word? Right? Gender dysphoria. That's a big word thrown around everywhere right now besides trans 
genderism. Am I correct in my my terminology? Um, but the Lord started to show me that if it were not for the church being confused in their imagination and their beliefs before now, then we could have never gotten to this point. Mm -hmm. Right. As quickly, especially as we have, because basically we had uh, religion dysphoria. Like this is who God says I am, but I feel like I'm this. So I'm going to be this and say it's God. And then you have denominations and then you have personal interpretations of the word. And then you have carnal adjustments to what the word says so that it's more palatable for people to receive. This is how we got to this point, because People didn't know who they were. Our next series, In Root, is the real you. Mm -hmm. And it is such a powerful series because here's the thing. If you don't know who you are, you're not going to think right anyway. The enemy, that's the first thing he goes after is that's not who you really are. That's not what he really said. Mm -hmm. And if we can get to the root of that in each and every one of us, and when we know who we are, it's easier to take thinking captive. Yep. easier to handle with care the word of God because it becomes so precious and inseparable from our very identity that anything that rises up against that isn't an option. And I don't care if it's comfortable. It doesn't belong there. And I will defend my king with everything I have because my king is my identity. My father is my identity. So our next series that's coming next month, I encourage you to register for it. It's always free, but make sure you register for it. It's huge. It is huge because that's what the enemy is going after. But listen, if we can teach ourselves and our kids to imagine on the word of God, the goodness of God, the kindness, mm -hmm. the power, the plans that he has for us, he, and it starts in his word. If we can be imagining, would he say that to us? He wouldn't. Would he create me incorrectly? He couldn't. He literally mm -hmm. can't. Because that would make him a liar. And he is God that he cannot lie. He has not created you incorrectly. The author of confusion is the devil. He is the father of lies. And once you know the difference, you can imagine on the things that God has for you. You can be set free from the lies that are holding you captive that look like currently freedom. Because I'll follow my emotions into where they lead me. But I will be entrapped in death and destruction as soon as I do. But first I need to know who he is and what he's really created me for, which is the biggest vacuum I believe in our churches today for our kids, for our families, is this big vacuum of don't you understand you're part of a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. He has called you to be separate for a reason. He has asked you to meditate on his word so that obedience is easy and he can lead you into that life abundantly. Yep. There is so much freedom in imagining the good things to the point where that's all that comes out your mouth. And we can start our children. We can start our marriages. We can start our neighborhoods on that thinking. And people can roll their eyes all they want. I know Tara, if she's still in, has a testimony of someone visiting her property yep. um, because she's driving. I'm just going to tell it for you. Are you okay with that? And her property was protected during a hurricane. Her animals are always protected. They plead the blood of Jesus over that property. We believe the word where our feet tread, that land is anointed and belongs to us, that our beasts are blessed. She believes all these things. Well, a neighbor stops by and she's like, well, did you hear coyotes are in the area? Aren't you worried for your horses? And the Holy Spirit <laughs> gently nudged her. I hope I'm telling this right. And he was like, don't you dare give in to that. And instead of not only just giving into it, she spoke up for the king. And she said, I believe this is anointed land. I believe I'm a child of God. And because of that, my beasts are blessed and protected as well. So no, I am not concerned about the coyotes in the area. And it might sound, because doesn't our carnal nature go, oh, that's so pompous, right? Has anyone ever had that look before when you're defending the king and his promises? Like people will look at you like, oh, well, aren't you special? Well, so are you. You just don't know it yet. I will defend the king and, the, and the, the death that he died so that I could defend him till my dying day. And he did the same thing for you. And your land can be protected. And you can live in abundance. And you can be set free. And you can imagine good things and allow 
creative realities to come out your mouth that line up with the word of God and change your very circumstance, your very thinking, your very living this day to align with what heaven has available for us. And we can start that with our kids with the simplest of things of starting to identify who told you that? Who told you to be embarrassed when people are just messing around with you? Who told you to be embarrassed and get angry and protect yourself? Who told you that? Your friends aren't trying to hurt you. Mom and dad aren't trying to hurt you. So who would have told you that? Who would tell you that it's you're always going to be poor? Who would tell you that it's okay to go to the doctor and take a pill to get better if you haven't seen any results yet? Who told you that it's okay? Or, or take a pill to... So, so because you don't have any symptoms yet <laughs> that's like, oh we're seeing God. that actually more often yeah. uh like it's a, a safety net of some sort of putting poison in, in your, <laughs> into your body um, it's gonna have horrible side <laughs> effects but just yeah. in case take it but it starts with our kids with not we have a toddler you know how it starts in her not listening to mom and dad right away so what do we do every day all day I just told you to do something. What's your response? Yes, mom. No, I want you to try again because we're going to do it with a happy heart. What do you say? Yes, mom. You know, like these are just mindsets you're getting into them that it is actually a joy to obey. Mm -hmm. That the person who's asking me to do these things expects good for me. And because of that, I can obey with a good heart. You can start teaching that to them now. Who told you to be unkind to your brother? What does the Bible say about your brother or sister? Right? Who told you that? Not just mom and dad going, be kind to your brother or sister. <laughs> you know? Like, that's easy in the moment. <laughs> yeah. But it's really drawing them back to identify the root of the thought that brought them to that point. Mm -hmm. And that's true freedom. Because then guess what? Be nice to your brother or sister gets a lot less because they're able to identify the thought before it gets there. And then it doesn't become an action. And then they don't meditate on it. And then their imagination isn't imagining doing wrong. Their imagination is doing right. And that changes everything. And yeah. if they fight back on you, well, on that, well, that's not true. What the word says is not true about me right now. You go back to Proverbs 3, 5. We all know that one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own under oh. understanding. Or we can go to... Isaiah 55, verse 9. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, how much higher? Like infinitely, it's of a different realm. Right. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts? Or I'll even give you another verse. It says, hang on, let me make us big again because I think it's weird when we're tiny in the corner and reading a different <laughs> yeah. scripture. Uh, you can say, I believe it's 1 John. Yeah, 1 John Chapter 3, verse 20. English Standard Version says, So whenever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and He knows everything. So we have to decide, hey, even if on the inside, my heart, my everything is screaming, this can't be true. Every thought in my head as I'm reading that verse again to fight against what, what the word says and being opposite to my realities, you read it and your heart, everything on the inside. This is not true. It's condemning us. The New Living says, even when we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. So we have to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, mm -hmm. acknowledge him and he will make our path straight. We don't have to figure out how to make our path straight. We don't have to figure out how to move from our current experience to what the biblical experience is. We don't have to figure out all the ways that God is going to work to get our thoughts from where they're at right now to where we're constantly agreeing with and meditating on what the word says. No, we don't have to figure out all that. Right. We have to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I, okay, can I share it? Do we have time? Yeah. Yes. We got a little bit of time. All yes. right. So this is what God was showing me yesterday. We all know those verses, right? Do you know what comes next? Nobody knows what comes next. Of which one? The Proverbs Isaac, chapter Proverbs. 3, verse 5 and 6. We know that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Done. P. 
period, end of chapter in our heads, but that's not the end of the teaching. He then begins to unpack that for you. What does that look like? So what's verse 7 say? Do not be wise in your own eyes. Yeah, right there. Right there. Bam, right in your face. Stop doing that. You don't have to figure out all these things. And you can just fear the Lord and turn from evil. What's evil? Anything that's opposite of God. If your thoughts are opposite of God, that's evil. If your tendency is opposite of what God wants to say, that's evil. And so turn away from the evil, fear the Lord enough to begin to trust him, and what are you going to be able to experience? It goes into, it will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Get out of your head and you'll be healed. Stop arguing with what the word says and walk in his healing. That's what this verse says. Sorry, Jocelyn, I saw your question. What was the website for Bible questions? It's in uh, openbible.info slash, slash topics, and then I'll get you right to uh, where you can look up what does the Bible say about anything. Fill so if your kids up. or you are struggling with a tendency that's opposite of what you know what the Word says, but you don't know what the Word mm-hmm. says, go there and I'll give you a bunch of verses on it. Yeah. So. I want to keep going because it's just so fun to me. Proverbs chapter 3. Because we always three, hear that first part of just Proverbs 3. Just trust that, in the Lord. Lean not on your own or son. All your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Done. Right? It's Stop. on plaques. It's on reading <laughs> cards. It just stops there. But why? We are big into the why and our kids are too. And usually you are, but sometimes we're kept from digging deeper into the why because of our busyness. The why is very important because he wouldn't say it without a why. He gives us the why. His word reveals everything that he has to reveal, and his Holy Spirit leads us into truth. So why? Mm -hmm. Why do we? So first thing, get out of your head and step into healing. What's the next verse say? Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. How do we trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding? Don't try to figure out how you're going to become wealthy, how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to do X, Y, Z. That's not up to you anymore. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Honor God with your body. Do what he says to do. How are you going to get there? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out. What do you do? Follow him. When he says do, you do. What he says say, you say. When you honor him and give what he's saying to give, when you sow generously, you reap generously, even though that doesn't make sense to our heads. I mean, it just, and it just keeps going. And then Don't despise discipline. I think this is And important. then the next one is the discipline. Yeah. This is because, <laughs> what, right, we all want to put the plaque of, you know, in all your ways acknowledge him, but there's just a little bit further down... Because we're acknowledging him, that means we'll also be disciplined where we're off. And we have mm-hmm. to be open to that because there's freedom in that. He says... People just want to be celebrated for right. the, for their right things without acknowledging their wrong things. And the only way we can get to the fullness of what God wants us to walk in is by letting him discipline us. And so that's what the... Go ahead. I cut you no, off. No, it's good. Because I'm... So... What's funny is there's generations all around me where my generation is helping our parents' generation walk out of religious wrong thinking by revealing this unfiltered truth to our parents. And it's it's awkward mm-hmm. because when you look at the age of like the earth and the way, you know, so you do it in an honoring way, but you do it to glorify the king and bring truth. I am surrounded by generations that are doing that right now, where the generation before was given this kind of um, religious based uh, word and and we're OK to gossip and we're OK to, you know, do things that the word very clearly says not to do. And we're surrounded with people now teaching that older generation in discipline and reproof by the leading of the Lord. Hey, this is not right. Don't do that anymore. And a big one is um, this might be in your family and we shut it down is just saying 
Like, <laughs> the Lord has made that a big one in our house. There is no just saying. Or just kidding. Yeah, just kidding, say, just saying. Oh, my gosh. Right? Because no. it just means I'm going to let my carnal nature out and then follow it with just saying. Only if I get <laughs> called on the carpet for it. I'm just kidding. I'm just saying. I was just saying. All right. You know. Doesn't matter. So, like... Idle words coming out of my mouth. I won't. I won't have to... Be responsible well, for them. No. I'm sure that God won't hold me accountable for those idle words, <laughs> just the other ones. So not giving ourselves even the liberty to have just saying, because what do we do? We often undo the blessings of the Lord, the promises of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, and we speak unbelief and undo faith. Because as soon as we speak it, our mind rehears it, and we start to imagine what we've just spoken. And when can, we start... Can sorry. you go into that a little bit more? Like, I guess I'm confused. I That's okay. It, but... Yeah. Which one? Which part? Like, they're just saying part. So, so let me give an example. It will be like, um, uh, someone in my life will be like, oh, you, you know, I'm thinking that is wrong and you probably shouldn't do it, but I'm just saying. And I'll be like, I'll be did like, did God say that? Does the Bible say that? Where did that come from? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm or, just saying. or, um, or uh, under what? their breath, you know, you'll have just had a conversation and then they'll be like, well, I don't think that's right. I'm just saying, I'm sorry. What did you just say? You know what I mean? Like, uh, and why it's followed with just saying, I don't know, because the power of words is, is, is something our kids, our families need to understand. Mm -hmm. So there is no just saying, because we need to acknowledge there is no just saying. We have the creative reality of the Holy Spirit living in us. And just saying has as much power as saying. So what <laughs> is it that you're just saying? So that you can let your carnal nature out. So you can let that little bit of feeling out. So that you can pat yourself and go, there, there, flesh. Don't you feel better? You know what I mean? Like, just saying. The word says this, but we're so far from that. I don't even know what we even have to do to get there. I'm just saying. That's a great example. Yep, that's a great example. So we are in a season of allowing the Lord to discipline. And he says, for whom the Lord loves, he reproves. So we're like, Lord, reprove us. Reprove each other through your word. You know, like, let us be a light. Let us be uncompromised in our living, in our saying, in our speaking, and in our doing. Let us do it in love. Like, I don't want the luxury of my own opinion. I certainly don't want anybody <laughs> else's that's apart from the Lord. Yep. And I don't need to think on anything else that is not the Lord. I don't need another opinion, another just saying, altering what the Lord has said is true, where I need my meditations to be. And if he calls you on the carpet for something that you're like, it's not that big of a deal. Or you have that challenge within yourself when you see a kid uh, speak or react that you're around, that you have influence in their life. And you're like, I probably should deal with it, but it's not that big of a deal. I don't just, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is another area when it comes to discipline, disciplining yeah. ourselves yeah. and disciplining uh, those that he's given us charge over so that we can be renewed, so that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can walk out and enjoy his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Right. And we I can't step into that without renewing our minds. We can't renew our minds without letting him call us on the us, carpet and show us, us, hey, You've thought this way for long enough. It's time to deal with this. And you're like, oh, I don't want to tackle that. That's that's too big. Or that's ah, not a big deal at all. Or whatever. You have a million excuses why you're allowed to think the way that you're not allowed to think. Like biblically. I was. I was getting all grumpy as I walked into another cycle I was about to repeat. And the Lord was like, what We're are not you about doing? To repeat it. <laughs> yeah. That but was the lie. That was yeah. the lie. Like, oh, I can't come out of it. I'm just thinking this way. I'm so grumpy. I don't want to do this. I'm angry, right? And the Lord's like, what? You know, like, and and knocked me right off. And I had to go out through gritted teeth and go, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I acted the way this morning. Because saying sorry is still hard for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> See? Uh, That's why no, I want to use not. an example. I'm not kidding. Like saying sorry, repenting comes easy. It comes easy because it's us going carnal, not the real me. The real me is is realizing that was wrong and I repent for listening to my carnal nature. That was so ridiculous. I am sorry. That's it. 
well, that was easy. Our pastor says, I was wrong. That's a good one. You know, <laughs> I was wrong. There, it, But then that most people follow it with, it's just really hard for me to do that. I'm just saying. Okay, now what have we done? You let your butt get in the way. Right? Now you just knocked it out with a just saying. And how many people have that in their life as normal? Mm -hmm. That's what we mean by just saying, which goes with our shuddy season <laughs> that, <laughs> that we talk about in Route 21 Day. Stephanie, in case you're curious, we're at, that we have a group of people that are all joining us live. And so it's super fun. But if you were to join us now, then you'd be way too late and you'd miss it. <laughs> and so too bad for you next week, maybe. But she said, wow, I just saw this example. Uh, sorry, sorry, let me say that. Wow, just saw the example that just as my son takes a weekly art class, I need to be aware of my verbal art that I'm creating each week. Yeah. I need to look at it in a tangible way. I think that's great. It helps yeah. you understand what to go what and do with it life, from now painting. is like, yeah. what realities are your thoughts creating? If they were, if your thoughts, like Patrick Kate said, were on your face or your thoughts were illustrated on a, on a painting in your, this is. Pastor Josh's thoughts, and they were all being illustrated right up here. Yeah. Then what kind of verbal art are you creating? What kind of realities are you creating? Because just as weird but real that would seem if that was hanging in your house, it's honestly in the spiritual world just as real. Mm -hmm. As having a big sign above your head that the whole spiritual world can see, mm -hmm. uh, hey, this is what we're meditating on. And either inviting the forces of the enemy to ha create havoc in your life or opening the door for the forces of God to make pathways of goodness and favor to follow His you every single released. day of your life. Like the windows of heaven being opened. When you do, when you speak, when you live for the Lord, then that releases it. It's not that it's not always available to you. It just releases it to you. Man, you should write a you should write a book or a, a series on. Anyone know a professional editor? Might, might the might factor. Might factor. That'd be, that'd be really, really okay. good. It would really help a lot of people. But seriously, we were just talking when you were just speaking. <laughs> we were talking about angelic help yesterday in Hebrews one. It says angels have been assigned to those who will receive salvation. Right? Angels respond to the word of God. So what do we imagine? The word of God. What do we speak? The word of God. When we are creating with the word of God, angels go into effect. So if we're creating evil with our words, what goes into effect? They go to make happen the, the spoken word, word of God. Not yes. just the intended right. or thought about what you whatever. actually say. You have to release it with your mouth, align your words with his words, and they respond to it just like they would respond to his words because it's his words. Taking out spiritual principalities and powers in high places. But if you're going to use your words to equip the w world that whoa, 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 hates whoa, whoa, whoa. you, I'm going to say it because that's what the word says, oh, the world no, or the evil way the that hates you, then what realm are you equipping in your life? What would you, in Stephanie's word, be painting? Mm -hmm. Carnal nature, flesh that leads to sin and destruction. What it doesn't of, make it hard to understand. What kind of paintings are we creating for our kids, for their expectations of who they are and who God can be through them? with our words and w even with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of things that show up on my face that never come out of my mouth, mm -hmm. but my face says enough. Yep. What I'm meditating on, things that I'm believing. My wife sees it, my kids see it, and it's just as loud as if I was screaming those words out. What's God calling me on the carpet for? Through my wife, helping me. I'm like, you just said my, it, but I can tell you don't believe it. Helping <laughs> me catch what my face is saying. So that what? my The meditations, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, my Lord. That's scripture. It's Not a, just the words. Yeah. My meditations of my heart. Why is that? That's because it's not just with our brain. We will take it in that way with our natural system, but it will become part of us as it is released through meditation, meaning I'm thinking on the word of God, the goodness of God, the good things that he's created, what he's the mm -hmm. author of and not other things. All right. I see Tara's got her hand raised. Way to go. I like that. <laughs> wait, wait, you're wait, still wait. muted. You're still muted. Thank you. Yes. Um, so um, I 
I wanted to just share really fast, and my thoughts immediately were like, oh, it's 11.33, you shouldn't share that, and the Holy Spirit's like, no, you need to share that. <laughs> yeah. So I was recently, and you know this, Kate and Josh, I was recently in a situation that was, like, terrible, and um, I was, uh, the whole thing, I was, my thoughts were like, it's my fault, it's my fault, everything that's happening right now is my fault, and um, the devil was like, yes, I got her, and so it took me longer than it should have, but when I finally uh, was like, okay, I need to sit down and just press into God, and um, started talking to him, like, Father, what, what do I do right now, what, right. how do I, how do I fix this, how yes. do I make this better, <laughs> and the first thing that God said to me was like, first of all, how would you feel if one of you found out that one of your children was in a situation and they were thinking all of the things that you're thinking right now? And it brought me to tears because it made me realize our father loves us so yes. much. Yes. And he's he never, ever wants us to go that route. Right. And so in that moment, I was able to like be like, oh, you're you know, and stop right. and change right. everything. Right. Because. We are his children, right. and he never, ever wants us to go into that spiral. Right. And so right. it allowed me to be like, he, you know, said, you, the, I'm the way out of this, yes. not you. I will Have show you a way me. out. That's right. Right. And so. Thank you, Lord. No, it's so good. This is uh, also my friend, mm -hmm. Tara, who reminds me often of the father's heart. Which makes it so much easier to want to renew our thinking to the word, to want to take every thought captive because he is a good father that loves us so much, that loves our kids so much, so much that we can trust him when he asks us to do our hard things, when he disciplines us, when it doesn't make sense to our carnal nature because all we know is worldly things, right? That we can trust him because of his love for us and that he wants to lead us into truth. That eternity is on the line and this isn't just for today. And we can trust what he's saying and where he's leading because of his love for us. And that was like what we posted the other day, a revelation by the Lord, that faith works by love. You know, we've always looked at that again in the works mindset as far as if I love people more, my or faith Or the world's will work. definition of right, love. Right, right. If I love better, my faith will work better. No, it's knowing his love for us that will cause our faith to work. It's knowing that he is love that will release our faith to work. To be that able to is, trust him. Right. That's powerful because then everything else comes in line, you know, and you won't necessarily right away believe that he loves you. Then you take that thought and you get it out. You erase it off your head and you get in the word and you find out the truth. And we do the same for our kids when they say, I don't think I can hear his voice. I don't know if that's true about me. I'm struggling. Right. Okay. We're going to erase that thought with finding truth. And we go after it, write it on cards, uh, have them color a picture of it, depending on their age. Mm -hmm. Any age can memorize scripture, any age. I told the, the junior hires uh, to on a, just put it on a piece of paper. This is what I need to meditate on today. Write that verse out, put it in their pocket. So every time they put their hands in their pocket or they're moving, they're like, what is that? They're reminded of what the word says. Yeah. Parents, just so you know, you might find scriptures or piece of paper in their pockets <laughs> in, in the laundry. So check the pockets before you wash them. Uh, but that's what we were telling them is to put in their pocket. I, it bugs me if I have something in my pocket, like a piece of paper that's like crinkling. And so it keeps makes making me think, what's in my pocket? And then I remember the scripture and then I'm, I'm helping myself meditate on what God says is right. true. Right. Not and kicking out, taking thoughts captive that don't agree with those realities. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to help yes, us Lord. focus on the thoughts that you want mm -hmm. us to have. Reveal to us, discipline us at the attitudes and and the thought patterns and the perspectives that we've oh, wow. we've been convinced are okay for us to hold on to or our only uh only thing we can expect. Show us what your truth is. Give us your words of truth to set us free. Help us to discover those things that you want us to step into and take on as real. And help us also yeah. to not allow uh, attitudes in ourselves or our families yeah. or even our friend groups that ref 
reflect thoughts that don't line up with you. Help us to use your truth to show them how to be set free. Yes. Not by our own wisdom. Yes. Not by our own uh, witty concoctions of things to say to try drive people yes. into God's, your truth. Yes. But really just go back to your truth and your word and release it over our lives, our yes. families' lives, our friends' groups, our churches, our neighborhoods, our cities, our governments, our regions. Yes. To begin to release your power even though it's something we don't see, even when our hearts may condemn us, to trust that your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than ours. And so we're going to align with what you say is important, the thoughts that you want us to handle with care. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Another prayer that I've been praying, just to encourage you guys, if it jives with you, is I've been asking the Holy Spirit to red flag anywhere in my own thinking or my kids' thinking or my husband's thinking that is is there and I've not noticed it that is against the goodness of God, the reality mm -hmm. of Christ. Red flag it. Like, you can't miss it. Like, that is really wrong thinking. I need it red flagged. Like, when I'm going through documents and I need that little tag sticking out that says sign here. You know what I mean? Like, I need that red flag Holy Spirit to say, look, that's still there. You haven't dealt with it. I want it out. I want it out of my kids. I want it out of me, Holy Spirit. Red flag it. That's been my prayer lately. Any other, I, I think you have to scroll down qu or sideways. Questions. I wondered what that button is. I'm going to find out. There they are. That's everybody. Oh, why or am comments. I not seeing everybody? Before we That's go. That's not nice. <laughs> I wondered what that arrow was. So we we are getting ready to get on the road. And uh, we'll be back in three days. But we're always available. Send your comments. Send your questions. Send people to sign their kids up. Oop, you, wrong button. We want freedom <laughs> for them. Oh, that's cute. We want freedom for them by the hey. word. Hi, Mike. Hi, you guys. Hi. How are you? Hey. I found you today because I'm at home. I oh, did a no-no. Uh-oh. I bruised my bicep and my left muscle at work, overworking it. So I'm at home rest right now. I have to go to an orthopedic to get it checked out. So this young man did some things. He was didn't know how he did it. All right, hold so that. Home resting, so I'm being fed by two great godly women and men that Aww. I enjoy. And I miss you guys. And I caught on you. It's like I joined. But I'm all by myself on the homepage. I don't know how to join the other group, so we're all together. <laughs> That's interesting. So, yeah. We'll figure that out. We'll help you. But first, can you reach out your arm that the bruised bicep is in? Okay, let's just take care of that. Let's mm -hmm. avoid the orthopedic. Let's avoid the world's way of dealing with things, and let's get that healed, yes. all right? Done so, deal. We just command that bicep to align with the Word of God. Holy Spirit, we ask you to take that word and make it real in that bicep now. Every cell, every muscle, every tendon line up. All bruising be removed. We know that our Father is outside of the time of this world, and we operate on that. I so command, any harm that was done be reversed in Jesus' name. Command full range of motion and the Lord's strength to yes. be present with you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. All right, move it around. Yes. Test it out. How's it feel? Oh, I got it. Let me take the sling off. Let yeah. me take the sling off. Test sure. it. While he's doing that, if you know someone that needs to join us, invite them. We want them to join us in the live conversations. Uh, like you all are, well, not everyone, because there's a bunch of people online that are not joining us live, but be part of the conversation so you can ask questions, put in the comments like all of these uh, amazing friends are, and then enroll. Kids need these truths now. Youth. So that youth need these truths now so that their emotions, their attitudes, that the communication of the world does not become the wellsprings of their life. Yeah. And then next month, 
We already talked about next month we're doing the real you. Who does the Bible say you are and we how to line up with that? Yeah. The real you, not the world's you, not the what anything you understand else. from anything. your parents you, your grandparents you. No. Mm-hmm. What is the real you in Christ Jesus? So that just went live today on our website. You can enroll for it now even though the uh Classes don't start till March 6th. Yep. How's your arm, Mike? Uh, I'm as good. Good. It's just going to get better. Yep. It's Thank you, better. Father, for the complete yeah. healing, mm-hmm. for no need of the world system, that he is your son and healing is already his. So we speak for that lie to leave his body, for full recovery to come as only you deliver by your blood and your promise. We speak it in Jesus' name in complete faith. Full restoration. Now. Mm-hmm. Just walk right yep. into that healing, man. You've got it. All right. Yep. We love you all. all right. We've kept you yep. longer. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. And our kids, we've kept them waiting longer. <laughs> so they're probably out there like, come on. we got to go on this trip. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Next week, we're going to be live just like this on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. But join us live in the Handle with Care series. Yep. All right. Bye, friends. Bye. We love you all.